Welcome to JetNexus Tutorials for fast, scalable and resilient applications. Today's tutorial is on JetNexus Web Application Firewall. Also known as a WAF, we run this as an isolated Docker container which you can purchase from the App Store in the Add-ons section. So, let's begin. Okay, so let's log on to one of our boxes. This is TRE4-1. We do have another one which is in the cluster, which is TRE4-2. I'll just explain a bit about this setup. The first service, port 80, that is our redirect service and that will redirect to HTTPS, which is the one below it. The HTTPS will do an SSL offload to two application firewalls, web application firewalls, currently showing status red because we don't have them on this box. And those web application firewalls will then forward traffic to the port 8080, which then forwards it on to one of the web servers. So it's kind of like a daisy chain. So they're showing red because they're not configured. If we look in the library of add-ons, you'll see there's no WAFs in there configured at the moment. So we go to our library of apps page, and that'll tell you you need to log on to the app store to view your purchased apps. Um, so first of all, I it automatically opens within the LB itself. I'm gonna log in with my username for the app store. If you haven't uh, logged on already, then you have to configure that manually yourself to create a profile on the App Store. So I'm going to go to the application section, look at the firewall, the application firewall, click the icon and you can see there we sign up for a £50 per month trial, you get a 14 day free trial, I'm going to buy two. And When we click sign up you get the ability to proceed to checkout, so you guys will just have to proceed to checkout uh, looks like I've done this before and I've got four as a quantity but I'm not going to buy it at this point because I've already purchased it. Because you've signed on to the App Store within the box you can then see your purchased apps. And I've purchased this before so I just scroll down to the app and then I click download. So this is now downloading from the App Store to this particular machine. So it started, you see a status bar there saying download 0%. That should shoot up fairly quickly, depending on how fast your internet connection is. And then once this is downloaded, it will appear in the top section, in the downloaded apps section. So we're in the purchased app section, which is a view of the app store of uh, my username and what I've purchased. I can sign onto any box and see what I've purchased and download it to that particular box. So once that's finished, it should scroll up to the top. and appear in the downloaded app section. So this now exists on the local box as opposed to in the cloud and then once we click deploy it will go into the add-on section. So any add-on really is a docker based container that can be run in isolation of anything else. So click the warning message, click OK and I'll say app deploying please wait and once that's deployed it will then be viewable within the add-on section. Okay, your changes have been applied. Therefore, we can go to the add-ons library. View the WAF, and we can see, let's give it a con container name. This is going to be called WAF1 because that's what we configured earlier as the real server. The external IP we can use, you can use this for traffic and you can also use this for the GUI. You can see it's got no internal IP until we start the ALB, but once it does, it'll have a 172.31.0.6 address, as you can see there. This is changeable, so which is why we use the container name as the real server, and I'll show you that just a bit later. And then we can use the uh, add-on GUI button to get through to the GUI of the, the WAF, and you can see the IP address is 10.48.98. So now the status light of WAF1 should show green, and that's because we're using DNS to resolve that to the internal IP address of the 172.31.0.6. We can add that in manually to that IP address, but beware that if you stop and start a container, that IP address is changeable, therefore we must use the container name. So we can see that that's gone green now. So why don't we do that? Let's go back to the add-on. We'll stop it 
both the WAF1 and the 06 should go red. When we start it again, it will probably take 07. And therefore WAF1 will still be green because DNS will take care of that. But the IP address 06 will go red. There you go, so it started as a different IP address. Just wait for that health check. Uh, there you go, so the health check now has failed for 06 because it no longer exists, but WAF1 is still okay. So if we change this to 07, that will pop back up. So just change that quickly, just to check. A little warning message telling you that that IP address is on the internal network. There you go, so that's popped back up, it's passed its health check. So we don't need that one, just get rid of that, it's just for an example. Okay, so let's look at the firewall itself. What do we do with this firewall? We go to the management section. Where do we want the traffic to go after inspection? We want it to go to the VIP that we talked about earlier, so 8080, and on that VIP is uh, you can have a number of real servers, so you can load balance to your web servers. Let's click update. We'll have a look at the firewall section where you can see it's in detection only. So only if we find problems, we're just going to record them. We're not going to block at all. And what we'll do is we'll try and go to the VIP address now. So our VIP address is a numerical one for this. Uh, what will happen is it'll probably redirect me to www.jetnexus.com. So we just have to check with ping where that resolves to. Does it resolve to the VIP address? Um, so we'll bring up ping. Let's just see if it's going external or is it going to my VIP? Okay, so it's going external. So I have to change my host entry. So I'm going to change that to go to the internal VIP address. Just take out that hash, save it, and it should be good. So we'll just test that with ping. Yeah, okay, so now it's going to the VIP address. So I feel confident now if I refresh this that I'm going through the load balancer, then through the WAF, back to the load balancer and out to my web server. And we can see that with the status page. So the there you go, we can see we can see it go through to 10.48.102. It redirects us to HTTPS, which then goes to the WAF, which then goes back to the load balancer to then exit out to the real server, the real web server. And we could have a number of real web servers there. So let's just check that. If we click meet the team, we see the traffic come through on 443, get sent through to the WAF, and then the WAF sends it through to the web server. Check that one again. There we see the traffic flow all the way through. So we see we've detected no rules, so everything's good on that one. Maybe I'll just introduce an, an SQL injection signature. So we allowed through because we're in detection only. If we refresh the uh, the firewall rule set, we can see we on the left hand side we've matched rule set that's detected the SQL, but it hasn't done anything about it other than note it. Okay, so let's quickly add our second WAF to this box. We go to the library of apps, click deploy again. We should get a warning to say okay. Yep, let's click okay. And whilst we're deploying that on box one, let's go to box two. Uh, we can look at the cluster in this one. So if we sign into box two, which is our second member of the cluster, you can see on this one, we haven't deployed any WAFs and just checking the clustering, you can see there you go, box one and two in the cluster. We've got no add-ons in here, so we're gonna have to deploy one. Uh, rather than purchasing it this time, we can already see in our purchased apps, a web application firewall we scroll down, click download. So that's because I'm already logged in, you can see. Click download and that'll go into our top section again to the downloaded apps. So the download is started. Let's go back to box one and set this as WAF2. Give that a different external IP address so we can get to two different 
wife GUIs. We click the add on GUI. You can see it's a different IP address again. And we should see WAF2 come up there. So that's gone green. It's passed our health check. We go to the WAF2 GUI. We should be able to see it's got its own detection only. Set the management. So let's set where it goes to after inspection of traffic. So where it forwards the traffic onto afterwards. And this is our internal VIP or this is our VIP on port 8080. So now we've got two, two WAFs being load balanced. They're being SSL offloaded and load balanced and then forwarding traffic onto the same VIP on port 8080. Let's just show you that in action. So we should see on the status page. Now we've got two WAFs with data going across them. Maybe we'll show you that again. Let's go to the events this time. And we can see the traffic going across, load balance across two web application firewalls and then on to only one web server in this instance, but we could have as many as we want underneath there. So back on box two, we should see our downloaded app. There we go. So now we see our downloaded app. Let's click deploy on that one so that we've at least got one web application firewall on box two. So just an important thing to note is the web application firewall, just because it's in a cluster, does not uh, copy across or synchronize across the apps. All apps are independent of each ALB. You have to manually add them onto each ALB and along with the configuration as well. So let's just configure this one as WAF1. So it has to be called WAF1, the same as Box1. Oh, just a little mistake there. I think it's on the wrong subnet. It needs to be on 8, 1048. Uh, so yeah, WAF1 on both boxes because the configuration is synced, but the, the apps aren't. So box 2 and box 1 will show the configuration, and that configuration says that real server is called WAF1, so you can call this one WAF1 on both boxes. And therefore, the configuration will work, the sync will work. So let's configure that firewall again. Oh, wrong address. That's 1048102, 10. So I've done 20. Yeah, let's change that to 10. Click update. And let's have a look at the firewall. So it's noted something already in detection only. And it's passed its health check. So now we've got a passive VIP showing blue. And what we'll do is we'll make box two the active VIP. So all traffic goes through box two and the WAF that we've just configured. So we can see that VIP has gone to active and green. If we view the status now and go to, let's go to the website. Now let's just adjust the columns first and um, tick caching compression off so it makes it a bit easier. You can expand some of those out. Maybe we'll save the layout after this as well. So if we save that layout, so we can come back to it. So let's go to a different page, go to box two, and we can see now the traffic is going to the SSL VIP, being offloaded to the WAF, and then being sent on to 1048102.8080 and on to the web server one. So now we'll do that SQL injection attack again. We should see that come through. We could change that to detection and blocking update the configuration, refresh that web page again. So this is an SQL injection attack. We should be blocked now by the web application firewall. And now we can whitelist those rules and then refresh that page and it should allow us through. So now WAF1 on box two has a different configuration to WAF1 on box one. So let's refresh that and make sure it comes through. So one of the things we can do is we go to box two, so WAF1 box two. We go to the add-ons page again. I oh, will just show you, yeah, they've got different rules. Yeah. So they have different rules. 
solution to that, if we go to the add-ons page, we can export that configuration. I don't know why my laptop shows that up as an iTunes, but it's a tar.gz file. And import that configuration onto WAF1, and we would do this to WAF2 as well. So at this stage, it's a manual process. Once you've configured your firewall to export it from one firewall and import it onto the other, um, we will be looking at making that automated in the future. So now let's look at box one WAF1. We can now see, just have to log on again. We now see uh, on the firewall, it's changed the detection and blocking and we've got some whitelisted rules. So they're the same now. One of the things I want to leave you with just before uh, we end this video is the home section. So if we click home, we can see a graphical view of what's happened on your WAF. We see the events per severity, events per status, and the top sources on the left. And on the right hand side, we see the total events of each five minutes. And we can see the actual rules that have been activated over those five minutes. Okay, so thanks for watching. And don't forget to watch our other JetNexus load balancing tutorials on the links on the page now.